Hello everybody, this is Simon Whiteley. This is just a quick video to address uh, a recent incident that occurred that I've seen in the news uh, regarding Harrison Ford landing his private plane on a taxiway at an airport in America. Um, now it's heavily related actually to the recent webinar I did on runway incursion. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that and then I'm going to talk about this in some detail. So I'll just give you a bit of an out outline as to what happened then. So apparently According to the newspapers, various newspapers, Harrison Ford was landing his uh, private plane at uh, an airport in America, the John Wayne Airport in Orange County, which is near Los Angeles, um, and essentially landed the plane. He was given clearance to land, um, and he landed the plane on a taxiway, um, and in doing so, he overflew a passenger jet, a 737, with lots of people on it. Um, and so there's a big uproar and furore about it, um, and lots of people basically accusing him of being a stupid old idiot, you know, uh, he shouldn't be flying and all this kind of business. And this, this fits into the stuff I was talking about with regards to CAST uh, and STAMP, CAST accident analysis and STAMP-based safety assessments. So what I've done is I've drawn a quick control structure, and to those of you that are on the webinar, it'll be very familiar, um, and then I'm going to talk about some key points. So here we go. So as you can see, this is the uh, the overall control structure that I've drawn. So on the top left hand side there, I've got the ground controller. Top right hand side, I've got the runway controller. Now I've presumed that that's the configuration of the airport ATC on the day. It might be different. More information should come out as the news uh, and incident reporters get in, get involved. But essentially, the physical process that uh, this control structure is intended to to control is the flight path the taxiway path of these two aircraft. So this aircraft is the uh, 737 passenger jet under the control of some air crew that's under the control of the taxi and movement of the aircraft. And then of course there's the pilot, Harrison Ford, who's in control of his aircraft and the flight path that aircraft had. Now obviously the incident itself occurred because the pilot, in this case Harrison Ford, issued some unsafe control actions to the aircraft. The aircraft's flight path was such that it almost came into conflict with an aircraft on the ground. Now, a lot of people, and most people, focus on this bit, the pilot's control action. So, in this case, Harrison must have been a complete idiot. He shouldn't have been flying. Why was he flying the aeroplane in such a dangerous fashion? Well, unless he's a criminal, unless he's actually trying to be an idiot, trying to kill himself and other people, um, this is not where the investigation should stop. Because ultimately, the control actions that he issued, unless he had a death wish, he must have thought that that was the right thing to do. So we need to go back through the control structure and understand why he issued those, with hindsight, unsafe control actions. So the first stop is the mental model. Why was the pilot's mental model, why was Harrison Ford's mental model uh, such that he believed the control actions he was issuing were safe and appropriate? So looking back up the control structure then, so the pilot is under the control of the runway controller. Did the runway controller issue any commands or lead to any issues with uh, Harrison's view of the world? Was it that the airport physical layout had interacted and provided information to uh, the pilot that led them to you know, have an inappropriate mental model? Was it that some issues with training or licensing or the pilot's health you know, did he have issues with his eyesight, for example? And then moving back over here, the air crew of the passenger jet. Well, why was the passenger jet parked where it was? If it was clear that there was a potential conflict between an aircraft coming into land and one on the taxiway, then why was that aircraft in that position? And that leads to consideration of the airport physical layout. Is it that that particular airport layout is susceptible to causing the pilot to land on the taxiway? And if you have a look at the satellite photos, and I'll include a link below, uh, it appears that that airport layout is somewhat ambiguous. Now, I'm not saying that I'm a professional pilot. I used to be a gliding instructor when I was younger. Um, but just looking at the satellite photos, it seems that this airport layout um, you know, potentially leads to having an incorrect mental model. Um, so the next question then is, well, 
Surely there must have been some kind of risk assessment associated with the airport physical layout. And surely that risk assessment should include consideration of this conflict. So the taxiway position and the flight path position. And you'll notice from the satellite photographs um, that that particular airfield stoplights are actually uh, arranged so that this aircraft is in a potentially serious uh, physical location. So there are questions about that. And just picking up back on the aircrew, did, did this aircrew stop their passenger jet in an inappropriate place? Are there questions about what they did? And then the next question is, well, if, if the aircrew behaved in a potentially unsafe way, then what commands did the ground controller provide? You know, so, so taking an overall system you know, a system view, systems thinking view, using the stamp-based method, it draws out all sorts of questions over and above, you know, the individual being an idiot, that, you know, pilot error, what was he doing? He was an idiot, he's old. You know, it's, and, and that kind of discussion, you know, jumping to conclusions is, is really not helpful, and it's certainly not helpful for people involved. I mean, he's a celebrity, so he's bound to get some flack over this, but all I'm saying is people should re re reserve judgment, take a look at the control structure and think about all the other aspects across this entire system that conspired to the pilot flying the aircraft inappropriately. OK, so just to add a couple of extra points then. So, you know, some key points here. The first, that because we were talking about runway incursion the other day, I just want to highlight that Obviously, runway incursion is about aircraft in the uh, protected area while aircraft are landing and taking off. Now, in this case, um, Harrison landed the aircraft on a taxiway. So is that strictly a runway incursion event? I'm not sure it is, but it would be interesting to look at that in further detail. Um, the pilot. So we talked about unsafe control actions. The un unsafe control actions were issued. They weren't intentional. They were unintentional. They were not criminal, there was no death wish. So it indicates that there's a mental model flaw. So why is that? And that's what we need to go and investigate. The airport runway, taxiway, geometry, physical features and paint markings. As I said, when you look at the sat photos, you'll see that there are a lot of different paint markings that uh, from the air, you know, uh, you know, they may not appear to be that clear. So they might be misleading. ATC control actions. What contribution did the ATC have in this respect? Was there any aspects to do with coordination between these? You know, is it that this aircraft was parked in an unsafe position uh, because there was not coordination amongst these controllers? I mean, obviously, we're talking two days after the fact, and this that I've created is only based on literally two news newspaper reports, which are usually inaccurate anyway. But even with that small amount of information, it's helped me to ask some really specific questions. And that's that's one of the powers of the stamp-based methods, the stamp-based approach. Um, and then, as I said about the position movement of the passenger jet, was it positioned in a hazardous location? And, and why was that? You know, and this all occurred on a normal Monday afternoon. So if it's happened once... It's highly likely that if the conditions don't change, that this will, you know, there will be a repeat. But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, if you'd like to comment below, ask questions, make some comments, I'd be interested to read those. Please like, share and subscribe to this video, to this channel. And uh, I'll see you on the next webinar, the next video. Thanks very much. See you later. Bye-bye.